Hey, <laughs> sorry guys, I'm one minute late, but I'm here. Let me get my screen organized. There we go. Yeah, if y'all got any questions, throw them in right away and I'll get to answering them. Uh, I did tell my wife to let me know when dinner's ready, uh, which is going to be in about 30 minutes. So this won't be a super long one. Today was kind of weird because it's what most handymen, I think, would consider a pretty good day. But one of the owners <clears throat> of one of the... Hey, handyman Mark, what's going on, sir? One of the owners of a rental that one of my property managers works wanted to meet me at the rental. I just did a move out on it. And it looks like they've decided to go ahead and sell it. So uh, I had put a bunch of notes in my invoice for the move out where the property manager had been very specific about some things to fix and um, that I followed her specifications, but that it seemed like there could have and should have and would have been more. So he wanted to meet me there today, or his dad rather met me there today to just walk and look over some stuff and get some more work done on it because they want to sell it. And, <clears throat> excuse me, I just gave him a price on the spot of uh, 450 You know, just, I thought, in, I thought about the work in my head and I was like, it was like a half day, but, you know, it's already almost 10 o'clock. So I'll probably, really, it'll take most of my day because I'm not going to work a full day because I got to get home and do a bunch of admin work. So I gave him a price of 450 finished it in about four and a half hours. I found myself actually disappointed that I only made $100 an hour because it was very clear, you know, they wanted to sell it. <clears throat> they wanted to sell it. They wanted to sell it now. They wanted to start showing it immediately. And I, I know in that situation, those people typically are happy to pay, you know, as much as they need to pay, really. Like they're looking at selling a house for two to three hundred thousand dollars or three to four hundred thousand dollars they're not worried about the handyman making a thousand in that moment um so it was a little weird because i was as soon as he left and i got to work i was just like why did you give him such a fair price but it was a good day it was easy work it was patch and paint the scraping a ceiling in a closet knocking off like some uh texture and some skim coat and then just putting up a new skim coat and texture little bit of touch-up paint, a couple uh, exterior outlet covers that for some reason were off and wires. They, were, they weren't outlets. They were just junction boxes, but the covers were off, so I put the covers back on. Uh, what else did I do? Painted the bathroom ceiling, just tiny little things, and I, I got my 100 an hour, and I was just like, I don't even want to be here today. I would rather, I've got <clears throat> this list here that I made when I get home and it's, it's all stuff I need to be doing here in the office. It's all, it's not emergency stuff. It's not like I'm behind and I'm not taking care of my business type of stuff, but it's all stuff that needs to get done to progress the business, to progress the YouTube channel, just to progress my life in a lot of ways. And I'd have just rather been here doing that. <clears throat> Mark White said, looking and sounding good. Thank you, sir. Uh, Rich said, Hey brother, how are you? Thanks for the info. You're very welcome. Kadir said, my man, what's going on? Kadir. Kadir said, started my business and on March 20th, 2024, you are my mentor. How's the business going then? It's, it's oh, March 20th. Oh, you started seven days ago. So how was your first week? T Chili, what's going on? I haven't seen you in here in a while. Say, so, hey, Ray, I appreciate all the videos. I work a full-time job as a laborer, apprentice, carpenter. I want to start doing side jobs after work and on the weekends. How should I go about doing this? That's like a hard question. That's a, that's a very broad question. This whole channel, every video on this channel is about kind of how to get started doing this. But I guess, I mean... <laughs> if you're not trying to do anything in any big serious way, um, you know, start with just throwing some Craigslist ads up. I think they cost five bucks or something, you know, and get a couple requests and go go get the feel of how to talk to your clients and stuff, you know. And don't be afraid to give them a good price, man. Don't 
don't get started in this business with the reputation of being the cheap guy. Don't build up a clientele of 14 people who are now referring you out and telling all of their friends, this guy's super affordable. Because now everyone calling you is going to be anticipating and expecting cheap prices. And that's not how you succeed. You don't have to be cheap just because you're starting out. If your work is solid and you shouldn't take work that you can't do solid work on, if your work is solid, the value of that work is the same as if somebody with 20 years experience did it. The only difference is it's just going to take you long. Scott Hughes said, hey, Ray, how are the twins doing after the great vomitarium? Man, I don't know what happened, but as soon as I, I you know, I shut this off because my wife opened the door and was like, I need you. So I went out there. One of them had just now puked. It was the third puking. It was one and then the other. And then the third one was the original one. Um, so she took them both to the bath again because one of them walked in the other one's puke. So she took them both to the bathroom again. I cleaned up the vomit, went in the bathroom while they were taking their bath and hung out. And they were fine after that. They were running around playing like nothing in the world was wrong. Um, they did. They threw up a lot of curdled milk, which was interesting, though, because they they hadn't they had just now gotten their milk like an hour prior. And I suppose an hour is plenty of time for it to curdle. It just seemed weird that it was curdled though, because there was other food with it. There was, we had pork loin, like a pork loin roast for dinner. That was in there. There was a bunch of stuff in there, but it almost looked like they'd been holding everything they ate all day as if it wasn't passing through, which is probably why they vomited. But they were fine almost like 20 minutes later. They were running around playing, screaming, chasing each other like nothing had ever happened. And also, Scott, as long as I got you in here, um, and you can just email me on this. We don't have to work all this out in the video. <clears throat> but I emailed you an invite to the Bulletproof Handyman Facebook group. And just so you know, I tried to create the Facebook group from my Bulletproof Handyman Facebook business page. I tried to create it from that page, which the internet said you could do, but it wouldn't create it. So then I went over to my personal Facebook page and it did let me create it. So I've created the Bulletproof Handyman Facebook group, which by the way, I just got an alert that said it's been unpublished. So I don't know what that's about either. So y'all may not even be able to find it. But you will find the Bulletproof Handyman business page, which is the Bulletproof Handyman page. That's not for sponsors and stuff. That's for us, for this community. I just had to make the group page separately. But uh, also, just so you all know, while I have you in here, um, the camp out May 29th through June 4th down here in Arizona. I would really like to see a bunch of you all there. It looks like we've got four people coming so far, which I think is pretty awesome because it could have been zero, you know. So I'm look, I'm excited for the four, and I'm also going to reach out to Jobber this evening or maybe I'll do it tomorrow. But I found a website that will put your brand name on a tent, and I was looking for it initially because I was going to make some bulletproof handyman tents, and then I thought, Maybe Jobber will pay for it. Maybe if Jobber puts their name, like the Jobber logo on the tents, that'd look cool to see all these tents with like Jobber logos. So I'm going to see if they want to buy five tents. The website I found, you have to buy five at a time, but they're like 20 to 40 bucks each. So it's not too much money. You never know. Uh, but if y'all go to the Facebook page, Bulletproof Handyman Facebook business page, the event is scheduled in there. There's a map that shows where it's at. Uh, I haven't put a whole lot in, but I'd like to see some of y'all there. It, and I know most of y'all aren't here in Arizona. It's going to be almost impossible for you to come. But if you can, it'd be cool. Oh, and Scott, so anyways, I sent you an email <clears throat> inviting you to the group page. Although if it's unpublished, you probably can't get in there. But anyways, I don't know anything about Facebook. I got off Facebook a couple years ago. I really don't like them, but they're the right tool to get this job done. So that's where we're going to have our group at. Kadir said, getting everything situated, kind of learning as I go. Yeah, you got a about a, I, I found this to be true. A lot of people have told me this. It takes about a year to start feeling like you really know what you're doing. 
on any business. It doesn't matter what the business is. When you start your own business, it takes about a year to get to the point that you really start feeling like, man, I think I think I know what I'm doing. And that was true for me, too. It was about a year in when I started calming down and going, all right, I think I'm going to I think I'm going to be OK. Edward Pitkin said, good evening, Ray. I'm glad to have made another live video this week. Good evening to you, too, sir. I'm glad you're in here. Donald said, I enjoy your videos, brother. Thank you, sir. I can tell y'all are liking the on-the-job videos, and I knew you would. I'm trying <clears throat> I'm trying my hardest to make them high quality, and that does mean less overall content, which is partly why I'm doing these live streams. For, for those of you who are really in it right now and following and learning, um, I'm trying to do these so that you don't suffer for lack of content, but I'm trying to make it really good content, which means it's taking me on and off most of the week in between working and family time. It's taken me a week really to put together one video. And then out of that week, it's like 12 plus hours of actual work <clears throat> just to make the one video. Uh, Lucas said, hey, Ray, is there such a thing as having too many property managers or should I just get as many firms as possible and then lean into the ones who pay best I currently have locked into? I think both of those answers are correct. I don't think that you should get as many as you can because you can get enough to keep 12 of you busy. So, I mean, depending on the size of the city you're in. So you don't you don't want to burn too many bridges but you do want to get a little more than you can handle. So if you've got, let's say your two are keeping you busy, you're like busy 30 to 40 hours a week, which is plenty of time on the job per week. Cause now you got to come home and do all the admin work too. But if they're keeping you busy 30 to 40 hours a week, then maybe go get one more and see if you can stay busy 45 hours a week. And if you can stay busy 45 hours a week, plus admin work at night, now you're making really good money. You're really busy all the time. And then if one of the ones that you have isn't a great property manager, then go get another one. Make yourself too busy so that you're busy enough to feel good dropping the one that's not a good fit. That's, that's my general advice. You want to have too much work, but you don't want to be so buried in work that you have to completely burn bridges with multiple properties. Because you may grow in the future, you know, really fast and need them and want them. Seth said, uh, hey, so I've done some work and it's been great. I'm an LLC, licensed, all of that. I'm currently getting ready to start working for my old employer to get my bankroll up to build my business. That's awesome, Seth. Taylor said, not a handyman, but have took inspiration from here and have linked with 20 or so property managers. So far, nothing but five estimates for large jobs with no replies. Are they... Fishing uh, for cheap bids. Sometimes I never, I never know the answer to that for sure. You know, I it, I get gut feelings that I'm usually correct about over time, but it it just all depends, man. It's hard to say. You know, it could also be that you are the cheap guy. That your estimates are cheap, and they don't want to go with somebody who's too cheap because it looks like they don't know what they're doing. But it could also be that you're too expensive. It could be that they're just fishing. I would pay attention. So I ask questions when people want estimates, not my property managers. When they want estimates, they get them like for big jobs. They just get the estimate, um, except for a couple, you know, that I know have a history of not getting them approved. But like, for example, if I if if one of the homeowners of a rental that I work on, if a property manager says, hey, can you do an estimate for the homeowner personally? He wants to just pay you personally. Um if he wants an estimate, I'm going to ask questions like, what's the time frame that you want this done in? Like, if you approve the estimate, how soon does this work need to be done? And basically what I found is people who are very serious about getting work done, if they're not just fishing, those people have answers to questions. If you say, what style of this do you want? What color of that do you want? If they know exactly what they want, they know exactly how soon they need it. If they know the answers to a lot of questions about the job, typically it's because they've thought it through because they really want to get it done. If they're iffy and they're like, oh, I'm open, you know, I'm open to a lot of different options. If that's kind of the feel of the answers you're getting when you ask those questions, they're just fishing. <clears throat> Noel Hopkins is in here. What's going on, sir? How are you doing? 
Noel said, today was a good day. Walked into another residential property manager's office today, and boom, they want to work with me and my company. That's what's up, Noel. Is it a big, uh, do they have a lot of doors or what? Matt and Kim Harris said, property manager are, are trifling. You have to stay on their ass to get approvals. That is actually true. Here's what a property manager does. The homeowner asks them for an estimate, or maybe they decide to ask for it either way. They ask you for an estimate, and when you give them the estimate, they send it to the homeowner and they forget about it. They don't really care if your estimate gets approved. So they send it and forget about it. And the homeowner's busy and doesn't really care and is not in a hurry, even though they might get the work done. Today's a good example. I just got one approved today from a homeowner that uh, they just took off the books like two days ago. I checked in for like the 15th time. And they said, hey, I keep emailing the homeowner. They're not replying, so I'm going to go ahead and take this one off the books. And if they decide they want it later, I'll let you know. And then literally two days later, all of a sudden, I get a new job request because the owner approved it. So sometimes they just take forever. These people, They're not living in the house, so they're not too concerned with getting things done quickly. <clears throat> Taylor said, for big jobs, should I give rough estimate first or... Uh, thorough. I give, I just, I mean, if I have a really good relationship with a property manager, I'll give them a verbal rough. I'll say, hey, just so you know, this is probably going to be in this particular range, you know, and then I'll say like, do you, do you need something more firm or are you just curious? And then they'll, if they ask for something firm though, I always honor my estimates, so mine are never rough. My estimates every time, if they're written down and emailed, it's always a very firm estimate and a very thorough estimate. Oh, by the way, before I forget, guys, because I may have to go to dinner soon, um, I found out from Jobber today, because I told you all before, and if you watched my one of my recent videos, they're doing 50% off until the 29th. They emailed me today. I think they made a mistake. They didn't say they made a mistake, but I think they did make a mistake because they said, oh, yeah, we forgot to tell you we're extending that sale through the 31st, which is the last day of the month, which is the day that all of their. They, so they put stuff on sale at the end of the month, the last two weeks or the last week. I don't pay attention to when they start. But I always notice them and let you guys know if you're trying to get into it when it's a little cheaper. And right now it's 50% off, which is the biggest sale I've seen. But I think they made a mistake when they told me that it was going to end on the 29th because they now are saying they've extended it to the 31st, which it's always ends on the last day of the month. But just so you all know, if you're in a trial and you're planning to purchase, don't purchase on the 1st like through the 14th. I mean, you can if you want, but if you're going to purchase, I recommend if you know at the end of the month, purchase on whatever sale they have at the end of the month. Don't be purchasing on the second when you've been in a trial during the whole period of time that they had a sale going on. Let's see. Noel said, moving away from commercial property managers and moving over to residential. That's cool, man. I, I like the residential a lot. I do. And it's so standardized. I worked commercial properties a little bit in the beginning. And I mean, it, it did pay good and stuff. But man, it was every time I touched anything commercial, it was never something I could go to Home Depot and pick up a part for. It just never, ever, ever. Everything I touched was like, oh, great. I got to find a new supplier in town i gotta call 20 commercial supply places drive all the way across town to their only warehouse or i've got to order stuff but then again you know you charge premium so there is that <clears throat> noel said 360 doors that's plenty yeah that's if you're the only handyman for a property manager with 360 doors that's enough doors if you get all of the work for those 360 doors that may not be enough by itself to put you at six figures a year, but that's enough to keep you busy most of the year. So that's a real good addition to have. Seth said, I live in a very rural area and getting quality jobs is tough. I'm trying to get on with property managers to get more rely more stable, stable work. Yeah, and I always do mention this, man. If you do the math, 
Uh, let's say you're charging 60 an hour, but if you were in a bigger city, you could charge 100 an hour. So it's $40 an hour difference. And let's say you have a city that's an hour drive away from you that you're not working in because it's an hour's drive away from you. If you, instead of working most days a week, if you do, let's say, 12-hour days, four days a week, then an hour of that is driving there and an hour is driving back. So 10 hours of actual time that you're charging for your time in that city, you're talking about $40 an hour times 10 hours is 400 extra dollars for that day of work as opposed to charging 60 where you're at. So always c consider, even though commuting isn't fun, consider commuting to a higher population density area where you can charge more because you can just rearrange your schedule so that, yeah, you kind of don't have a life for those four days, but you can make up all that money too. And then you could still do like smaller jobs back home on the three days that you're home. Noel said, pretty big company used to be a pretty big company used the Zillow tactic. That's good. Yeah, guys, if y'all are looking for property managers, go to Zillow and search Zillow for rentals and then find the types of rentals you'd like to be working on. I recommend spec homes, just regular old subdivision spec homes where they're all the same. Find the companies that have tons of those for rent and then just go to those companies to ask, you know, if they want to utilize your service. Adriana said, we never do ballpark estimates. That's good. Uh, Seth said, this is why I'm trying to build my bankroll working for my old employer. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do, man. We all did. Noel said, I'm going to go with Jobber. Sweet. Yeah, also, Noel, by the way, um, I had, I forget the exact condition that you emailed me about, about Jobber, but I had somebody else today email me because they clicked on my link, they used my link, they purchased Jobber, and then they got an email from Jobber saying, thanks, we've applied a credit to so-and-so's account um, for referring you to Jobber. And I don't remember the so-and-so's name, but it wasn't me. And luckily, this guy was nice enough to email me and let me know and just be like, hey, is this you? Because I used your link and it's saying that this other person got the credit. So long story short, Jobber fixed it, but something went wrong with the software where it was trying to credit somebody else with a jobber sale from somebody who had clicked my link to purchase it. So if y'all have that happen, please do let me know. <laughs> because they can fix that manually. And that's honestly, jobber is like, jobber's like the sponsor of this channel. You know, I have Next Insurance and some other stuff, but like, for example, when I take 12 hours, to make one video that's time i took away from making money on handyman work um and jobber is how that gets paid for jobber is what makes up for that so they're they're everything to this channel i could not do what i do if i if it, jobber didn't exist i wouldn't have 4k camera i wouldn't have good audio i wouldn't be in this studio i wouldn't be taking the time that i'm taking for those to just to make the better content hopefully Y'all think it's better content. I couldn't do that without jobbers. So it is very important to me that they know <clears throat> that I'm doing my my fair share on my end for their sponsorship. Carberry Q said, I have found most property managers need multiple estimates so that uh, they just want you to fill paperwork. Some probably do. I don't think mine do. I don't because most of mine get approved and I'm definitely not their cheapest option. I'm one of their more expensive options. And it may be that they push their homeowners to approve mine. I do know what you're saying, though. There's probably a lot of property managers who have it in their contract or even who just have homeowners request because most people know that, you know, if I'm getting stuff done on my home, I'm going to get three estimates. And I'm not going to pick the cheapest guy. I'm like, whatever happens for sure, I'm never, ever, ever going to pick the cheapest estimate. I'm going to pick the second most expensive or the most expensive, depending on how I think they'll do with the work, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, that it probably is happening to you at times, or maybe you have managers that do that. I don't think mine do, but that is very correct that a lot of people do know that they should get more than one estimate. So 
there's always a, a decent likelihood that yours is not the only one, which is fine. You know, I, I'm not, I don't have a problem with competition. Seth said, also, I have Jobber and I love it. Dude, I'm getting excited about it now because I told you all I wanted to get an employee later this year. Maybe a couple, who knows? I mean, eventually multiples, I guess. Um, but now that I'm building these kits and I'm building these processes and I'm building these systems and I'm looking forward to hiring an employee, now I'm looking at Jobber from the perspective of actual like payroll and stuff. Oh, by the way, I got a QuickBooks affiliate link today, which I know y'all must be excited about <laughs> sarcastically. Um, but no, because I have QuickBooks. I have not synced it with my jobber and searched through it yet, but they actually did give me an affiliate link today, and I know I'm going to be using it as soon as I hire somebody so I can do payroll. It seems like most of y'all use it for your business as well which maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. I still haven't dove in, um, but I'm going to be diving in now. Also, because I'm using a new jobber, it's not a super new feature, but a new-ish feature where uh, my son, to save time from going to Home Depot, is now purchasing a lot of stuff out of his pocket, like materials at Ace Hardware. Um, but I don't have the same setup with Ace Hardware I have with Home Depot. So what he does now is he's able to upload that receipt as an expense, assign it to the job that he's on. Like it's all gets taken care of. And then I go into Jobber and I can just see what he's spent on materials and reimburse him for that and not have it look like it's part of his paycheck because that's not pay, you know? And if I don't differentiate that, then the IRS is going to think he needs to pay taxes on that when I give him that reimbursement. So that's pretty cool too. But I'm getting more excited about it because now I'm looking at it not just from the standpoint of subbing out work to subcontractors, but from the standpoint of hiring employees and scheduling them, and putting them in a van, sending them out and having all the job forms and stuff for them to check off their checklist stuff, get signatures from tenants or from homeowners. So it's pretty cool. Paul Dardo, all my favorite people in here tonight. How are you doing, Paul? Noel said standardized means more kits that can be built. Yep, I'm going to I'm going to build a kit for all of them. No, every single I'm already I got it on part of my to-do list on my clipboard today is to uh pick just decide. I don't need to make a list. I already know what I'm going to do like the next 12 kits, but on my list is I need to pick the next one and get started on it. Like actually get started on planning the video, planning the kit purchasing, I think I told you, I'm trying to put all the tools in every kit that you need for the job. So there won't be any more going back and forth for tools. I'd like to even not have my EDC bag for one-off jobs. I'd like to just grab the one kit and take it in. So I need to purchase new tools. Also, by the way, Home Depot has these, if y'all watch, you saw it in the video, if you watch the hose bib video, these little yellow screwdrivers, and maybe it's just mine, but I assume it's going to be all of them. They're like a dollar fifty-seven, and they have a they have a bit holder at the end, and you can you know pull the bit out and swap between Phillips and Common, or you can pull like that whole shaft out, and on the other end is number one Phillips and a small Common slotted. So that's four screwdrivers in one, and which is screw multi-tool screwdrivers are not new. But this is a dollar fifty-seven, so I'm gonna go back probably tomorrow. Next time I'm at Home Depot, I'm gonna grab like ten of them because I know I'm gonna be throwing them in those kits. But those are super cheap, so if y'all wanna like grab some spares, I'd go pick up those dollar fifty-seven yellow screwdrivers. SDS Constructions in here too, man. Everybody's here tonight. So howdy, Ray. Uh, got lucky to find you live. Thanks for all the content and the how-tos. Those videos will be a great re resource. For new and up and coming, I agree. And beautiful thing about those two is I'm gonna attach, I'm gonna attach the videos that I'm doing now, where I'm showing you the job kits and the step by step. I'm gonna attach, I'm gonna put a link to those videos in Jobber under each. You know, I do my custom line items for all these jobs. So when I have an employee and his job's gonna be to do a hose bib, for example then I'll just click the custom line item for hose bib to stick on there. But that custom line item in the future is going to have the link to my video. So even if my instructions aren't enough 
for them to remember how to do the job. Instead of calling me and asking me, I'm just going to say, did you watch the video? And they're going to say no. And I'm going to say, go watch the video. And they can click on my video from inside Jobber and just take them straight to YouTube and they can see how I'm going to do it. So I'm excited, man. There's some neat stuff coming up. But I'm glad you like the videos, sir. I really am. I'm, I put a lot of work into them now. And y'all can thank Jobber for me being able to put that kind of time into them. Noel said, send that link out. I need QuickBooks next. Yeah, I'm going to get it posted. I just, uh, well, actually, you know what? I don't have to do a video to post it. So I'll do that. I'll go YouTube Studio has a feature where you can like make a thing. You can type it out and then tell it to add it to all of your videos descriptions. You can say add it to the top, add it to the bottom or whatever. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll get the link out at least. I do need to wait to hear back from them because it wasn't clear to me my link. Like there was a thing to click for links, but then it shows like 150 links that are dated all the way back to 2020, all the way up to current. So I don't know if those are mine or not. So I, I emailed them to find out for sure what link is my link, but I will get that on as soon as I hear back from them about that. BM Home Services said, where do you start to look for help? Part-time paying, not necessarily full-time employees, but for on-call needs. Love the channel. So let me reread that. Yeah, I don't know where to look, really. I got lucky, and a couple of y'all from the channel do some work for me, which, you know, is just super lucky for me because that already whittles it down to people who are at least trying to, to learn, you know. Um, but I don't know where you find them. When it's time for me to hire employees, I think I'm actually going to use like Indeed or I don't I don't know the names. The companies you go to online to look for jobs. I don't know the names of them, but I think I'm actually going to use one of those because I'm not hiring a handyman to work for this company. I'm going to hire an intelligent person. It's going to be not just intelligence, I'm going to hire somebody that I would feel really good about them working on my house. And I don't care if they have experience or not. They need to have minimal experience. Like they, they need to know how to use basic tools and stuff. But I'm going to train them how to do the work. If they're, if they're intelligent and they're well-groomed, I have no doubt that I can train them for the simple jobs. I have no doubt that anybody can learn how to do any of this work. The work itself is, in fact, the easy part. It's the business side that's hard. So I'm going to actually interview and hire based on how articulate they are, how well manicured and groomed and dressed they are. And yes, I know it's an interview, so they're probably going to come in looking and smelling better than usual and like on their best behavior. But that's what I'm going to use for my hiring decisions rather than trying to find somebody who already knows how to do everything but doesn't know how to interact with people. Brendan said, hey, Ray, can I change my job or biz name after my trial? I haven't finalized my company name. I'm I'm certain you can, yeah. I'm, I haven't done it, but I have zero doubt that you can change your company name. You can change your branding. You can change all of it. You can. I'm sure you can even change the email address. So, like, if you change your name and you go get a new LLC and a new website and a new domain and email hosted under that domain... I'm I'm certain you'll be able to change all of that within Java. Noel said I was looking at electrical at Lowe's today. Oh, for uh for kits and stuff. Sharp Home Services. Yeah. Sharp Home Services said, hey, so I'm setting up my LLC and got my EIN opened up a business banking account to not pierce the veil with my business checking and personal. How do I pay myself? Thank you, Ray. You're the man. I think the answer to that is going to be, um, honestly, QuickBooks is I, I've looked into them enough to know they do have payroll. What I've done is I've just literally just done like direct deposits from my business account to my personal account. But as I said before, I have an accountant and he's maybe I'm spoiled, but my accountant, he just gets access to all my stuff. And then he just takes care of business for me. He does for me what I do for property managers. Um, but when I do need to start doing actual payroll, 
which I've been, I haven't talked to my mother-in-law specifically about payroll, but I do want to have her running this business. I do think she's interested as far as like office manager, not running my end, but running all the admin. And, and I know she's talked about QuickBooks before, and I feel like that's the solution. Um, but yeah, that's, I just direct deposit from my business's checking account to my personal checking account now because I don't have employees. And then as far as paying my son or subcontractors, I use like Zelle or uh, Venmo, stuff like that. But eventually I will go to an actual, once I get QuickBooks set up, I'm going to figure out how to use it correctly so that it is tied in and synced with Jobber where everything transfers and hopefully my mother-in-law or whoever's managing the office is going to be doing a real official like payroll system instead of my hacked together system. <clears throat> Noel said, told you, bro, it's like it's a like minded meeting place. I agree. Goldmine Arcade said, do you have anyone you can recommend for logos? I do. And they won't give me an affiliate link, but it's Smashing Logo. Smashing Logo made the Bulletproof Handyman logo like a few different versions of the Bulletproof Handyman logo and Smashing Logo made my business, my actual handyman businesses logo as well. It's an AI generation one. I do think last time I looked at it, it had changed a little bit, but basically it's going to, you're going to give it some basic info and it's going to throw a lot of logos at you and you're going to like heart or not heart logos that you do and don't like and you can just kind of freely willy-nilly if it looks neat to you and you're considering it you like it and if it's not neat to you then you don't like it and then it uses that feedback of what you like and what you don't like to keep generating more that's taking that knowledge from up here into account until eventually you just get to something that you love um, so smashing logo i think i paid 100 to 120 dollars somewhere right in that range and they gave me the whole brand package. What's up? Okay, cool. Thank you. Looks like dinner's done in 10 minutes, roughly. So yeah, Smashing Logo is who I use. They won't give me an affiliate link, but I'm never gonna I'm never gonna not recommend what I think is a good product or service just for lack of that. But yeah, in fact, when I applied, it was like I hit submit and it was like submit, boom, auto deny. Don't know why. Maybe the channel's not big enough. I have no idea. But it was like an automatic denial from them. But I still recommend them. They make great logos. Sharp Home Services said at Goldmine Ar Arcade, whatever you do, don't go to Fiverr. I found a graphic design artist personally and had mine made. Cranberry Q said they are also they are. They are also nut drivers. Yes, they're quarter-inch nut drivers as well. Donald Todd said, I've been waiting to start my own business, but it's hard to do working 60-plus hours a week for the man. That's And that's what I was doing when I started this business. I was only able to escape because a friend of mine wanted a kitchen, and that was a couple weeks' worth of guaranteed work. And that was my stepping stone and my escape out of aviation and into handyman. <clears throat> Carberry Q said, I call them six and ones. Yeah, it makes sense. Noel uh, Hopkins just said, Bulletproof Handyman. Yes, Noel. I don't know what you mean. Sorry. Scott said, Ray, speaking of kids, Milwaukee just came out with first aid. Oh, kits. Uh, Milwaukee just came out with first aid kits. The Milwaukee Packout 193 PC first aid kit is the larger one, and the Milwaukee Packout 79 PC or piece. First aid kit is the smaller one. I'll look into that, man. I do. I will need first aid kits for sure when I have employees, and I really should have one for me right now. Maybe I'll get an affiliate link for that too. Carberry Q said quarter inch and three sixteenths inch. Oh, really? The yellow one. It's it's different sizes on each end. I didn't think of that, but that's cool because three sixteenths is usually the size. If it's not. So if, if a hex head screw is not quarter, if it's a little smaller, it's always the 3 sixteenths. So that's interesting. I did not notice that. I wonder if I have one. I don't have one in here. I took them all out to the van. That's cool. I didn't know that. I'm going to keep that in mind. 
Micah said, uh, at Goldmine Arcade, Smashing Logo, Google it. Yes, he's, Micah said Smashing Logo, too. I really like him. Uh, Goldmine Arcade said Sharp Home Services. Thanks. Noel Hopkins said, hey, man, anyone can be a handyman if they want to be. Hell, I have a master's and bachelor's degree, but would rather be a handyman. Yeah, I, I think a business is just about a business. You know, I had a food truck, too, and I, I did not have food service experience any time since... My junior year of high school, may, yeah, junior year of high school was the last time I had had anything to do with food service. And then I started a food truck when I was 30-something. And again, the food truck was easy. Building the truck was easy. Building the recipes was easy. Making the food was easy. Everything was easy. The part I failed at was running a business. I think that's where, I think that's the the key to a successful business is understanding that the business is not the same thing as the work that gets done in the business. The business is the hard part. The work anybody can do. Paul Dardot said, I agree too. I have a BS and an MS, but I'd rather be doing handyman work. Yep. BM Home Services said, careful with the bank transfers when paying yourself if you become successful enough like 100K or more and file as an S-Corp, not single member LLC. Your payroll to yourself can now be deducted. Yep, that makes sense. I understand what you're saying there. Also, guys, just so y'all know, if you're going to be, if you anticipate being around six figures or above, you're going to want to be an S-Corp. And what you'll do is you'll pay yourself a salary, <clears throat> and it'll be what they call a, a reasonable salary. In other words, you'll pay yourself a low salary. However, all that money the business is making that's still going to go into your pocket and you're going to spend, that's going to be treated as something like a bonus or a dividend that's that you're going to pay yourself. But again, that's why I recommend having an accountant. A lot of people think that you don't need to be an LLC and you don't need an accountant. It, ma it matters in really big ways. The, the amount of taxes that you're going to pay are going to depend so hugely on what structure your entity is and how you pay yourself through that. Noel said, I was telling everyone to join your Facebook page. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Y'all go join the Facebook page. Go look for Bulletproof Handyman. Um, again, I, I, I'm not a fan of Facebook for me personally, um, like an individual page. I, it feels, it felt when I got off of it, Every time I opened it up, it was just negativity. It was everybody arguing with everybody nonstop. And every post that was posted was just bashing somebody or something. And then it would get addictive and you'd scroll for too long and not even with good content, just scrolling, hoping to find good content. And so I got off of it. Um, and I don't plan on doing really hardly anything on the personal side but it is a great tool for the business side. We need a group, so that's going to happen on Facebook. And I need a page for the business on Facebook as well. And it's not like it's for you guys to go to, though, like where I can post my events and post my videos and stuff and have them searchable under a profile. Jamie said, good evening. I'm Jamie. First time on your live stream. Thank you for all your information. For some reason, I don't get notified uh, when you're on, but I just want to say I started a home repair business. That's awesome, sir. Don't hesitate to email me at bulletproofhandymanbusiness at gmail.com if you have any questions. Just don't email me and say like, hey, I'm starting a business. Do you have any advice? Because my answer to that is, yeah, I do. I, I It's an entire YouTube channel worth of advice. But specific questions that have direct answers that I can actually answer for you, send me those if you need to, and I try to get back with everybody. Noel Hopkins, it got deleted. The comment or the page? I do know the group has been unpublished for some reason, and now I have to go. I can't even figure out how to republish it, and I'm not even the one who unpublished it. But So the group you may not be able to find, but the page, the, handy, the Bulletproof Handyman page, you should be able to find on Facebook. Edgar said, hi, first time here. I appreciate all the information you shared. Do you recommend using workers from Home Depot? Absolutely not. Nope. I don't. I do everything on the books, man. Everything on the books. Every teeny tiny little thing. I don't pay people in cash to do work for me. 
I don't let clients pay me in cash under the table. Everything is on the books with my business because this is a very real business that I do intend to grow into something that takes care of my family and my legacy after I'm gone. So uh, it's all on the books. I don't need any trouble with the IRS. Oh, sorry, quarter inch and five sixteenths. That's cool. Either way, I'm going to check it out and see what size it is because that'll be good. That'll be handy either way just to know when I need a five sixteenths, which I think a lot of my, what do you call them, the blue cement anchors that I'm just brain farting on the name, Tapcon. I think a lot of my Tapcons are five sixteenths, so that'll be handy. Although I'm probably not going to be... <laughs> I'm probably not going to be screwing in a tap con by hand, but it's still good to know. <clears throat> Carberry said, that's crap book for you full of keyboard warriors. Yeah, I agree. And by the way, guys, I mean, I know I'm not going to have to worry about this with y'all on the Facebook group, but the path I've decided to take with the Facebook group in terms of moderation is going to be the rules are super simple. It's, it's just like be kind. Um, essentially if, if y'all are starting shit on there, not you, I know you guys probably aren't going to, but if people are getting on there, trying to talk crap, trying to talk down to people, just not being nice, not being productive members of the group. Um, I'm just, I'm not even going to like warn people and try to explain why it's against the rules. I'm just going to delete their stuff, you know? And if they do it again, I'm going to delete it again. And if they make a habit of doing it, then I'm just going to delete them. So there's not going to be like babysitting and handholding. If somebody is is just not being a nice adult productive member of the group, if they're if they're uh, if they're taking value from the group rather than adding value to the group, then I'm just I'm just going to delete the comments and the posts. And if it happens more than two or three times, I'm just going to delete the person. Because this, I think y'all have an idea what this channel's about. Y'all understand what it's about. That's what the group's going to be about, too. And that's not that y'all like... And y'all feel free to post, like, a picture of you and your wife on your 30th anniversary. That's fine, too. It doesn't have to be handyman-related, as long as it's community-related. And it's not negative. Because for everybody out there who thinks, you know, somebody might post and be like, Hey, I built this today, and I charged 150 If somebody chimes in, like you're an idiot, you know, why would you charge anything less than 300 for that? Or you're a hack. Or if y'all start, like, if people are in there not making it a pleasant experience, I'm just going to delete the post. And like I said, a few times of doing that, I'm just going to delete the member. There aren't going to be a bunch of warnings and suspensions and all that. It's just, if you're not a productive member, you can leave. Pittsburgh. Toddy is in here too. What's up, man? He said, I was only on Facebook for a month. I hate it there. Yeah, I'm not a fan. I'm the, I don't spend any time scrolling there at all. I log in to do stuff on the business page and then I log out and I, I don't have anything to do with the personal stuff. Noel said, if they pay cash, I still invoice them and market is paid with cash. Exactly. Me too, sir. Everything I do, they can pay cash, but it goes into my system as cash and it gets deposited in the bank as cash. Daryl Smith said, I'm debating on starting a handyman business or a small dirt company for South Texas. Just scared to make the jump. <clears throat> Currently, I travel for work and don't really have any connections there. Yeah, that's going to be rough, man, but I do wish you good luck. If I can help you out, let me know. Carberry Q said, have moderators you assigned to help? Yeah, Scott Hughes is going to be the moderator starting off for that. Um, he. I know it's going to take a lot of his time, so, you know, if it gets bigger, he may not have the time for it, and I may do more. Uh, but at the moment, Scott Hughes, which is a channel member, y'all have probably seen him. He's been in this live stream, and he's in a lot of other live streams. He's a regular on the channel, so he <clears throat> he's going to start off moderating for me, and he's going to kind of help me learn the ropes for Facebook, too, because I don't, it's not the same platform that I left. Nothing works the way that it used to. Noel said, you're going to keep the Facebook page public. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's going to be, it's all going to be public. I, unless there's a reason to take it private, I don't know. But um, it's, right now, I'm keeping it public. When I was making the group page, 
you could pick public or private, and it said if you pick public, you can take it private later. But if you pick private, you can't take it public later. So I'm starting it public, and then if if for some reason that doesn't work well, then I'll make it private. But I don't wanna I don't want people to not be able to find or not be able to join. Bo Baker Masoud's in here too. Say hey Ray Boba from uh Absolute Fix LLC. How long it took you to start YouTube channel before it was an idea? Uh if if you're asking how long from the time it was an idea to the time that I actually started it. There was a good three, call it three to five months. There was a definite three months where I was planning on it. I, I literally, it was a plan and I knew I wanted to, and I was trying to learn how to do it. And then I was stuck in this mode of like, first I need to have all this in place and I have to know what I'm doing and get it all figured out. And then I'll make a video. And then a lot of the people I watched on YouTube that have channels about making YouTube channels kept saying, stop waiting for things to be perfect and just make a video. You know, like even Mr. Beast is like, your first video is going to suck. Your first hundred videos are going to suck. And he's right. Go look at my first hundred videos. They weren't awesome. Maybe the information was good, but the videos weren't good. Even now, I think my videos are mostly mediocre. You know, like I, I compare them to other people I like watching. My videos are not there. Um, but yeah, it was about three months before I finally said, okay, I was literally waiting on primer to dry and just said, I'm going to make a video. I'm going to do it right now. I don't, I'm just going to make a video. I'm going to say whatever I say, and it'll be my first video. Um, so if that's what you were asking, that's the answer. Alpine said, hello, brother. Been watching your video for a while. I have my LLC set up by next month. That's awesome. Good luck, sir. Deadly Gallerina's in here too. Said, hey, y'all, just joining now. Happy to see everyone. Thanks for showing up once again, Ray. Appreciate you. I appreciate you too. I'm seeing everybody in here tonight. This is a nice live stream. This is really nice. I, I like seeing everybody. It seems like almost everybody in here is people that I'm used to seeing and, you know, whichever live streams you can make, but it's all y'all at once today. Daryl Smith said, I'm thinking of saving a uh, minimum six months expenses and just commit next spring. Keep the great content flowing. You're contributing so much. Cool. Yeah, that's a good idea, man. Good luck to you. I really hope you succeed. Alpine said, and wondering where I can get, <clears throat> where I can learn some skills. I have skills in window making for five years and small knowledge of general construction. What steps should I do? Thank you so much hard question to answer man like if you really know that you don't have the skills yet uh the i think you can go work for somebody else which i hate doing uh or you can do whatever it is you're already doing and start learning how to fix all the stuff on the side like for friends and family but otherwise i mean to get like a full round well-rounded set of handyman skills if you don't feel that you have them already at least the basics already um you just kind of have to go get some construction jobs or something. Yeah, that's gonna. You're you're probably gonna have to work for somebody if you really feel like you don't have a general knowledge of plumbing, electrical, drywall, framing, and I do mean general, like just small. But you gotta at least be familiar with using most of the tools and just kind of know how things go together. Noel said, "Where can I find the group page?" Yeah, that's the thing, Noel. It said it was. Let me let me very quickly come over here and just see if I can public group for members manage community home. I just want to see if there's something public. Yep, yeah, it's public group rules. Group status? What's group status? Account status, no restrictions. Manage admins, activity log. I don't see anything there. If anybody on here knows how to group settings, let's see. Privacy is public. Hide group. Hmm. 
Now we all have to just sit there while I'm trying to figure this out. I just don't know. Group status. I think that's, yeah, I was already on that one. I just, I don't know how to list it. I th it was listed. A couple random people found it even, and I didn't unlist it. So if y'all know how for me to re list the group republish it or it's still here it exists it's just uh hold on. i don't want to bore y'all on the live stream by trying to figure all this out but bulletproof handyman public group joined don't know, man. I just don't know. But go find... It says six members now, so it didn't say that earlier. Are y'all finding it and able to join? Is it showing up? I'm going to go back to some comments, but if any of y'all... Let me know if you can find it. Let me know if you can join it. Let me know if you can see what's there. And if you can't and you do know, then let me know how to relist it. <clears throat> what's up, buddy? I do, yeah. Let me shut this down here in like two minutes and I'll join you out back and we'll do that. Cool. My boy wants to throw some frisbee. So I'm going to speed through the rest of these and I'm going to go throw some frisbee because it's already kind of getting dark. Pittsburgh said, I have to go, but I have a quick question. Do you caulk around a toilet install? Yes, I do, but I leave about that much open in the back behind the toilet so that if if there's a blockage or a leak under there, it can come out the back and get noticed. Okay. Taylor said video thumbnails are pretty pro. Yeah, I use a lot of templates. Um, some of them I design myself, but I use a lot of templates and then just rearrange the templates and like delete all of their pictures and their words and then add my own stuff. Mark White said, I love your early videos. They were very inspiring. Thank you, sir. SDS Construction said, six-in-one screwdriver. I used the quarter inch for hex head downspout screws and the five-sixteenths for pipe clamp hex head screws fairly often. Lutz has these screwdrivers on Amazon for around $10 each. Blue hand. Whoa, what is that? I've got a giant bug around my head. Scott Hughes said, Daryl S., on your trips, take time to scope out the PMs, etc. Let them know that you're thinking about moving into the area. Take them to lunch and pick their brain. That's a great idea, Scott. Thank you. Keys Boss said, just got to the U.S. Your channel has been an immense source of information to me. It's just the right thing that I need. Thank you. Trying to set up the handyman business here in Philly and bought my tools. That's awesome, man. Good luck to you. Alpine said, thank you, brother. Keep us updated with new videos as much as possible. I'm definitely going to do that. Noel Hopkins said, it's all good, man. I'd rather meet here. Cool. All right, guys. I'm going to try to spend uh, what little bit of daylight there is left throwing a Frisbee with my son. And I don't see any more questions. So with that being said, uh, don't forget the jobber sale is to the 31st, not the 29th. So you don't have to be in as much of a hurry but 50% off is the biggest sale that I've seen them have. So uh, jump on that. It's a good time to get into a grow plan and see if you like the grow plan. You can always downgrade later on, but with 50% off, if you want to test it out, I think now's the time. Noel said, later, brother, later. I love you guys, and I will see y'all on the next one.